Okay guys, sorry that we're doing it this way today, but sometimes things are out of my control. So um, this idea of writing a rate law is really super important. Um, the AP test is going to have, definitely have rate law problems on it. Definitely going to have you doing what we're going to learn, start to learn how to do today. Um, we are going to expand upon it later, but today we'll give you the basic idea of what a rate law is. So if you take a look um, on here, I'm not sure if you have this. Yeah, you do. You have this generic rate law on your paper. This right here is the rate law. So what you see a rate law is, is it's an equation that relates the reactants, see the reactants here in this generic equation, it relates the reactants to um, something called K, and when you multiply all of them and you raise them by these exponents, whatever these exponents come out to be, then if you multiply all of that, it'll tell you the rate of the reaction. Um, so it's a very useful equation because it can allow you to calculate what the rate of a reaction is for any set of concentrations. Okay, you see that that's what the point of this is going to be. The question is, how do we figure out what K is? How do we figure out what X is, Y, and Z? We need to know those values, and they must be experimentally determined. Okay, you cannot use the coefficients for this. This is something people try to do. They try to look at what's in front of A and just make that the coefficient because what these X, Y, and Z numbers are going to be are really small whole numbers. They're going to be ones and twos and threes. And so people often try to make them the coefficient. But write yourself a note next to where it says X, Y, and Z in your variables that they are not just the coefficients, okay? And you can see there on your paper, it says that they are calculated. Actually, if you look two couple paragraphs down in bold, you'll see it says there's no way to theoretically find the values of x, y, and z. You have to calculate it, okay? It has to be calculated. And it's calculated from data like what you see in the first example problem there on your paper, um, that little data table. That's how we're gonna go about calculating these. And the process is pretty straightforward. Um, you're going to notice that it looks like it's long and hard because of the practice problem takes pretty much the entire front and back side of your paper. But what you'll find is that it really is not that difficult. Okay, so you'll see there on your paper, step number one is to, oh, what did I just do? Sorry. Step number one is to write the rate law plugging in the actual reactants. So instead of calling it A and B and C, we're going to write a generic rate law, but using our actual reactants. What you're also going to notice in rate law is that we never are concerned with the products. We never even pay attention to them in kinetics. Kinetics is all about reactants. Okay? So if you will please write this generic rate law, it's going to be rate equals. Now K we're going to have to experimentally determine too, but that's our last step. And then instead of putting A, and we use square brackets, ooh, let's talk about that. Square brackets, um, let me go back here. Square brackets, these square brackets mean molarity. They mean molarity. So we must be in the unit of molarity when we go to plug in to those square brackets. Okay, so square bracket with the first reactant, which is Na2CO3, and then a square bracket with the second reactant, which is CaF2. And then what you're going to do, oops, I should have left room, is this one has the exponent of x, and this one has an exponent of y. And we're going to have to figure out what x and y are experimentally and k. So essentially, we're not done till we know this, this, and this. Okay, so that's what we are going to be working on here in the rest of the steps. So if you take a look at step number two, it says that we are going to determine or calculate the value of x. Okay, so what we have to do is look at our data table. You're going to find two experiments where the concentration of Na2CO3, um, what does it say on your paper? My PowerPoint's wrong. If you look at it, it says Na2CO3 remains changes. That doesn't make any sense. Take a look at your paper. It says, since we're looking for the value of x, and x is the exponent on Na2CO3, we need to find two experiments where the concentration of Na2CO3 was changed. Okay, so this word shouldn't be here. We want Na2CO3 changing. but in order to figure out how X is or what X is, we need to have CAF2's values remain constant. So let me go back to the data table, okay, right here. So let's look and find two experiments where Na2CO3 is changing and CAF2 is staying the same. So if you look here, Na2CO3 is changing in experiments one and two, 
and CAF2 is saying the same. So we're going to use that data. Okay, you'll see in a second why this part's important to have that remaining constant. Okay, so now that we have that experimental data, we're going to write the rate laws again. Okay, but we're going to be plugging in the experimental information. Okay, what we just saw in that experiment. So we decided that we're going to use experiments one and two. Okay, that's what we're going to be using. And we're going to start with experiment number one. Okay, and we're going to actually plug in the data. So into that rate law that we wrote just a second ago. So remember the rate law equals rate equals the K times the concentration of your first reactant to the X and the second reactant to the Y. So in experiment one, the rate is 2.2 times 10 to the negative third, and that equals K times, now look at the concentration of Na2CO3, it's 0.2, and that's raised to the X, and then the concentration of the CaF2 is 0.2, and that's raised to the Y. Okay, looks like so. Then you're going to, oops, did not mean to do that, I'm sorry. Then you're going to do the same thing that we just did, but do it for experiment number two. So using the data, so the rate on experiment number two is 4.4. I'm getting the rate from the far right side column. I don't know K. My concentration of Na2CO3 is 0.4 raised to the X, and my concentration of CaF2 was 0.2 raised to the Y. Okay, so it looks like so. Now, this step, we actually won't do this way. Let me tell you what you want to do instead. And you can actually immediately write what we just did in this, this manner. What we really want is a ratio of those two. Okay, you see here, we want a ratio of those two. What we're going to do is look at them both and see which one has a larger rate. Okay, if you look at them both, this one here has the larger rate. So what we're going to do is rewrite what we already wrote. Again, when you do future problems, don't write it twice. You can just immediately do this. I'm going to take the one with the larger rate, and I'm going to put it on the top of my ratio. So I'm going to write this one out. Okay, and then on the bottom, I'm going to put the other one. Okay, so I'm making a ratio. So 2.2 times 10 to the negative third, then we have K, then we have 0.2 raised to the X, and then 0.2 raised to the Y. Now, if I was with you, I would be tasking you, so tell me what cancels out. Okay, immediately, you should see that Ks will cancel. So this is not how we're going to find K, because it cancels out every time when you make a ratio. Also, notice over here, 0.2 raised to the Y and 0.2 raised to the Y. If you have the same number raised to the same variable, they'll cancel out as well. So that leaves us with a much simpler equation. Now, hopefully you don't need your calculator. If you do, you can get it out. But 10 to the negative third and 10 to the negative third essentially cancel. So 4.4 divided by 2.2 is equal to 2. And then over here, we have 0.4 raised to the x and 0.2 raised to the x. So first do 0.4 divided by 0.2. That equals 2. And then it still keeps its exponent, right? When you're dividing um, values with exponents, the exponents have to match, and then you just divide the numbers and leave the exponent. So if 2 equals 2 raised to the x, okay, remember this is an exponent, then x equals 1. Okay, and so that will be the value of x in our rate law, is x equals 1. All right, so that's the basic idea of what you're going to be doing with the math. Now let's do the same thing for y. Um, and Y will be on the back side, but stay on the front side of your paper because we need to find two experiments. This time we want, because remember the X went with this one, the Y goes with this one. So we need to find two experiments here where CAF2 is changing, but Na2CO3 is staying the same. So if you look here, it's changing for those two, staying the same. So we're going to use experiments two and three. Um, again, to save time, make it easier for yourself, note immediately which one's bigger. I see that experiment three has a bigger rate. So I'm going to write these as a ratio with experiment 3 on the top. So we're going to go to the right part. Okay, so we're finding Y. So we're going to use numbers 2 and number 3. I'm going to have you skip this part because, again, you don't need to write it that way. Just go right to this ratio part. That will make it a lot shorter for you. So we're going to take experiment number 3, which had a rate of 8.8 times 10 to the negative third. We're plugging it into that rate law, so it equals K. The concentration of the first reactant was 0.4 in experiment three, and that's raised to the X. And then the other one is 
raised to the y. By the way, I could actually plug in, I know what x is, x is 1, so if I want to plug x in, I could, but you can also leave it since we know it's going to cancel anyway. And then we're going to divide by 4.4 times 10 to the negative third, and then k, and then 0.4 raised to the x, and then 0.2 raised to the y. So things that cancel out are going to be k. k cancels all the time. The x values will cancel, the 0.4 raised to the x divided by 0.4 raised to the x. So that leaves us with 8.8 .8 times 10 to the negative third divided by 4.4 .4 times 10 to the negative third, which equals 2. And then 0.4 raised to the y divided by 0.2 raised to the y again is 2 raised to the y. And that will give us a y that equals 1. Okay, so again, these exponents should be small whole numbers. So 1s, 2s, 3s. There are chances for fractional exponents, but you are not going to see any of those. So if you ever get a fraction for an exponent, go back, try something different, figure out what you did wrong mathematically. Okay, so that gives us x and that gives us y. Now we also need to find our value of k. Um, let's, let's see, in step four, I have this kind of broken down for you. So let's rewrite our rate law. Now plugging in what we know. So rate equals, and then we still don't know k yet. k is something we're still going to have to find. Then we have, oops, I was trying to write in a different color. But oh well. So our reactant is Na2CO3, and that will be raised to the first power. I'm not going to write an x because now I know x is 1. I'm also not going to write a 1 because, you know, we just write leave it blank if we know it's a 1, and then CAF2, and I'm going to leave that as a 1 as well. So the only thing I have to worry about here is what K is. Now this next part here is talking about what those exponents mean, which is extremely important. However, I want, since I'm gone and I'm not here with you, I want you just to work on the math part of this for today, and then we'll talk more about the reasons and what the exponents mean. Um, there is a problem on your homework. We're going to skip. Um, the first problem on your homework talks about what does it mean for these exponents. Um, so any problems on your homework that ask you how it affects other things or what the exponents mean, don't worry about it. Just do the math stuff. Okay. Um, so let's skip that part. Well, again, I'm going to teach you it, but just not this second. So let's learn how to calculate the value of k. Calculating the value of k is actually really easy once you know your exponents. Because what you're going to do is just pick one of your experiments. does not matter what experiment you pick. It could be number one, it could be number two, it could be number three. Um, they all should give you the same k value or very close to the same k value because experimental data can be off, of course, and these, this is experimental data. So I'm going to use um, experiment one. So again, my rate law is rate equals k times concentration of Na2CO3 times concentration of CAF2. And I'm going to plug in here, here, and here. I'm going to plug in my data from experiment number one. And I'm just choosing to use experiment number one. So you get 2.2 times 10 to the negative third equals k times the concentration of 0.2, that's what they, the experiment one says the concentration of Na2CO3 is, and that's raised to the first power, times concentration of CAF2, which is also 0.2. So when we take those, we divide them over, we end up with a K value equal to 0 0.055. Now, the unit on this is extremely important, okay, and again, it's something that is highlighted a lot on the AP test and we definitely need to know how to do this unit. Again, however, I want to be there to explain it to you. Okay, so for now, I'm just going to tell you what the unit is. Um, I will tell you tomorrow when we're together how to actually calculate this unit or figure out what this unit is. So the unit on this one is 1 over molarity times seconds. And again, I'm going to teach you how to do that, but I want to be there to teach it to you because I want to make sure everybody's clear as to what to do. Um, so we're just going to, again, get you to the point where the math is, is good for you, okay, for today. So now we have the value of K. So now we go back and figure out and, and calculate or write down, I guess, because we already did the calculating. We're going to write the rate law. Um, this has to do with those numbers that I told you whenever you hear the word order of reaction. That has to do with the exponents. So that's the part I'm going to also explain to you tomorrow is what the exponents mean, because they do mean a lot. So the very last thing it wants us to do is write the rate law now that we have all the values. So the rate law is rate equals, so 
the rate of this reaction will be equal to K, which we found to be 0 0.055, times the concentration of Na2CO3 to the first power, times the concentration of CaF2 to the first power. Now we did all of that just to write that equation, but this equation is so important because now that it's done, now that we took those three experiments and we figured out our exponents, we figured out our k, now if I came up to you and said, hey, you have this rate law, what if the concentration of Na2CO3 was 0.5 and the concentration of CaF2 was 0.25? What would the rate be? Well, you would plug that in there, you would plug that in there, and you would solve for rate, and you would know what the rate of that reaction was with that set of concentrations. So it's a very useful tool to have the rate law when all is said and done, okay? Now, what I want you to do at this point, so that you have a little bit of time to process, those of you that have any issues can get them um, corrected, is I'm gonna have you in groups, and, and Herr Hansen will help you with this, but I'm gonna have you in groups um, go to the lab stations, and you're gonna actually do practice problem number one, um, together, the one down at the bottom, I think it's just called practice problem. So you can go back through this process. There is an answer key at your lab station in the back. So once you're done, or if you need help along the way, you can use that answer key. But please don't just copy it, you know, help each other, work through it. If no one in your group knows how to do it, ask another group, you know, be productive and be helpful. By the end of the period today, you should be able to figure out exponents and you should be able to figure out K. I will explain exponents tomorrow. I will explain how to find the unit on K tomorrow. But for today, you should be able to get that far. Okay? And again, I appreciate your help and I appreciate you continuing to move forward. I'm glad we have this technology available so that we can continue in the right direction. Okay? I'll talk to you guys later.